What's up guys, Van Zeeuwen here, and today we're going to be doing episode 16.3 of Java 2D Game Engine Development. Today we're going to be doing packet sending to and from the server, um, and to and from all the clients. Uh, we might not get through it in one episode, it might take two or three episodes to actually do the actual packets, because this is a very, very intricate and in-depth thing, but uh, we will get it done, and I will release these daily until they are done. Um, so, first things first, I want to ask, tell you guys that this is just my implementation of doing it. There's always at least four different ways of doing anything in, jo in uh, any programming language. You can always write the same piece of code four different ways. So this is just the way that I do it and the way that I see how it should be done. Um, I'm sure that AAA game developers do not use the same implementation. However, this is kind of like the, the basic idea of it, which then you expand upon in different ways. Kind of like how we sent a ping and pong last episode, and now we're actually going to be doing a connection as opposed to just a simple ping and pong. Um, so let's get right into it, and with that, please don't write down um, what I'm doing right now. I'm going to explain to you some stuff just on how this works, uh, just so we can get into the actual what we're doing, opposed to how, because I don't want I don't want you guys just to write code blankly and not really know what it means. So firstly, I'm just going to create a static function here, just so I can jot down some notes. Please don't copy this again, but essentially right now how we have it is we have the client sending to the server, oops, uh, server, and he's just saying ping, okay? So he's sending this string of text as a byte, or as a byte array, uh, to the server across a bunch of different connections to get there. And then the server, when he receives that, or she, uh, <laughs> he sends back uh, Pong, okay? So this is, this is how um, connections actually will work and how this protocol will work, how packets will work. We'll need to send some sort of way to signify that this packet is a login packet. Now the way that we're gonna do that is we're going to, instead of just sending ping, we're going to designate two different characters for the type of packet it is. So a 0, zero packet could be a join packet, a zero, 1 could be a disconnect, a zero, 02 could be a move, a uh, negative 1 would be like a an invalid. I might not include, I'll, well I'll have to include invalid for certain reasons, but it's not going to get ever called at all. But zero, 00 is going to be the one that we're working with today. Um, and the server, once he gets that, he's going to say, okay, zero, 00, I know it's a login packet, and, it's also, and here's the data, because there's going to be some data that we're going to need to send. So he's going to say, here's some data, and this data, uh, pertains to that login packet. So that's how that's going to work. Um, now what we need to do is we actually need to implement this and make this work like this. So first things first, we're going to need um, our player. So we're going to need a multiplayer player. Uh, so we're going to call it player MP, and we're going to put it right beside the player. It's also going to extend the player class, uh, extends player, and we're going to need to create that constructor. Uh, X, Y, yep, yep. And in this player, we're also going to need to include a few things, like uh, public. I'll make them public for now, but we can recess these later if needed. Uh, inet address and IP address. And public, oops, pub, public int port. Now these two things are also going to be included here, um, so please take that into account. Uh, inet address, IP address, and int port. Okay, and then we're going to set them right here. So IP address is equal to IP address and this dot port is equal to port. Okay, there's that. So now what we need to do is we actually need to uh, create, what do we need? Uh, actually, we're going to implement the tick function here as well. We're going to override it because we will need that later, but we won't need it now. I'm just going to put it here for later use. So we're going to override it, public void tick, and we're just going to call super dot tick for now. Oops, super dot tick. So this will just call the, the previous tick function in the player class. And we're just going to keep this here so we can establish the connection, maintain that connection, and know that this connection is persisting. Um, we're also going to create another constructor here. And this one is not going to include the input here. And we're going to say null. Uh, this is going to be for if the player is connecting locally and it is an actual local connection, then the player is going to be known to be on this computer and that the, that the uh, input is going to need to be this input here. So there's that. Um, now we're actually going to get into the actual meat and potatoes, so it were. Uh, so we're going to need the packet. So we're going to go into the net here and we're going to create a new class. Uh, we're going to change the package up here. If you didn't know this, this, this is how you can create new packages while creating a new class at the same time. Uh, we're just going to change the packet here to packet, or packets rather, and we're going to call it packet. This is going to be our basic packet class. Now this is kind of going to work like the tiles worked, where we have an array here, but instead of an array we're going to use a, something called an enum. I haven't talked about enums before, and this is going to need to be an abstract class, so before I get too in-depth about this, please uh, make it abstract, which I can't spell, abstract, there we go, class packet. 
Um, now an enum, what it is, is it's kind of like a mini class. So we're going to be able to define an enum, and then we're going to be able to call some kind of static variables in this enum. Like uh, say the enum's name is packet type, which is what this is going to be. Uh, we're going to be able to call packet type dot move, and it'll and then we'll be able to access a bunch of different sub um, things inside that. So it's kind of like how the tile works, kind of. It's just with the tile, uh, when we defined one in here, every single stone tile in this tile is going, like there's only one stone tile here, but every stone tile that we call from this is going to be this one stone tile. We don't want that. We want to construct them on the fly because not all packets are the same. So that's why we're doing this. So we're going to say public, en or public static enum, just so it's visible to everyone. And we're going to say packet type, uh, packet types. And we're going to have invalid here. This, this is the actual typical way that you do um, enums. They're all uppercase in, in here. And uh, next one is going to be login. And we're going to give it 0, 0. And the next one is going to be disconnect. And that's going to be 0, 1. Okay, and then we're going to end it with a semicolon. So these are the different types of the class. So these are different instances of packet types. And we're going to give it these data members because this is going to say something about the constructor. Constructor packet types dot in is not defined. So we need to create that. So we're going to say private int packet type or packet ID uh, private packets or packet types. Now this is the actual constructor here. So we're going to take that packet ID uh, and then we're going to say this dot packet ID is equal to packet ID and then oops packet ID. And then we're going to need to say public int get packet or get ID. Return packet ID. Okay. So this is our enum. So now we can call packet types.login and it will and packet types.login.get ID even further to get the ID of 00. It's just a way to reference things. Uh, now we actually need to instantiate the actual packet. So we're going to say public byte uh, packet ID. And then we need the constructor for that. So we're going to say public packet. Uh, int packet ID uh, this dot pack dot why isn't my period working dot packet ID is equal to byte uh, packet ID now this packet ID here is isn't in it is individual from this packet ID but they are going to be the same one so this one is going to get sent to zero and this one is going to get sent a zero as well so they are kind of the same in that sense um, we, we will also need here uh, public packet we will be able to send it, actually no, let's not worry about that. Let's do that later on. Uh, we're also going to need public abstract, this is where the abstract comes in, void write data, write data, and this is going to take a game client, and we're going to copy this down one line and change game client to game server. Okay. Now the difference between these two functions functions is when we send something to game client, it's going to send whatever data from this packet to the to the server from this client. When we send it to the server, it's going to send it to all the clients within this server. So that's the main difference from those. It's a very simple way of doing things. Um, next, we're going to say public uh, string read data. All right, we're going to send it in the byte of the data, and it's going to say string message is equal to new string data dot trim. And now since we're designating the first two, so the first two uh, two different spots with um, the ID, we're going to omit that from this because this is just going to be the actual contents of that. I'm going to say return message dot substring and the begin index is going to be two, not three. Because we're going to keep zero and one, those two characters are going to be for uh, the ID. And we're also going to need that function as well. So we're going to say public string um, how am I going to do this? Uh, let's actually make this static. No, don't worry about that. Never mind about that. We'll, we'll continue with that later on. Uh, we all actually need a static function here, though, for getting the type of packet. So we're going to say packet types. Uh, look up packet. And what this is going to do is we're going to send in the int ID of the packet, and we're going to have to find out what packet we're pertaining to. So we're going to say for packet type. Uh, p equals pack packet types dot values. Oops, not value of dot values. What this is going to do is it's going to loop through all the different packet types in this enum here. So it's going to loop through invalid login and disconnect. And we're going to say uh, if p dot get id is equal equal to id return p. 
and at the very bottom here we're just going to say it's invalid so return uh, packet types oh it's not going to pop up because I was lowercase packet types dot invalid okay so that's going to look up the packet and return the actual ID from that so now we actually need to create our packets so we're going to go into the packets class here and we're going to create one uh, this one I'm going to name these packet uh, 00, 00 login and I'm going to packet 001 disconnect, etc., etc. And I'm going to do this so that they appear in sequential order, so that we don't just have them all jumbled all over the place because of alf alphabet, the alphabet, how the alphabet's structured. This will verify that 01 is always first, 0, 0, 02 will be after that, 0, 03, etc., etc., etc. Um, these classes are going to extend packet, so don't be sure, or be sure to do that here. I don't know what I did there. And it's going to need that constructor again. So we're going to add the constructor and we're going to send it 0, 0 because we know that the packet is that. So there's that. Uh, now we're going to say the ID. Well, this is the ID, so we don't need to worry about that. So now we're going to say, we're going to send it a string, which we'll send it the byte of data. Uh, data. And we're going to say, this will take the username. Uh, string username. And we're going to say this.username is equal to read data data because that's all we're going to be sending in this login packet it's only going to be the username um, we're going to create these implemented methods as well and just backspace the contents of them for now uh, we're also going to need to construct this packet at some point in time we don't really want to send this byte of data so what we're going to do in that in that case is we're going to send a string and we're going to send the string of the username and we're just going to put username here so this is going to be when we're sending it from the client in the original instance when we're creating it, and this is going to be when we're retrieving the data. Uh, now, for the write data function here, we're actually going to create a new function in the packet. I didn't think about this earlier, but we're going to say public abstract um, get data or yeah get data, and this is not going to take anything. And we're going to return. Actually, no, this is an abstract class. It's going to return a string. Actually, it'll return a byte array, just for simplicity's sake. What this is going to do is this is going to be the actual byte array that we're sending back and forth from the client. So we're going to have to override this here, um, add implement, unimplemented methods. And what we're going to return is we're going to return 00, zero plus uh, this dot username. And that, that's the actual data that we're going to be sending. And we're going to actually dot get, dot get bytes. I think that we can just encompass this in brackets and that should work like so. So now we're actually going to be sending this string of text and this is just so that we don't have to create this multiple times and we don't have to write this multiple times. We can just change it once here and it'll be good. Uh, for the write data in the client, we're just going to say client dot dot uh, send data and we're going to say get data. Okay. And for this write data for the server, we're going to say server dot send data to all clients and get data as well. Data. There. So now we're going to know about disconnects and connects and stuff like that. Uh, we're also going to create this method in the server and all this is going to do is it's going to loop through an array that we haven't created yet. So let's create that array right now. Uh, it's going to be a private uh, list uh, with the contents of a player MP and we're going to call it connected players equals new array list player MP and that P should be capital. So what this is now, we're going to import java.util.list. Um, this is going to be, what's going on with game here? Oh, I didn't put a colon there. So this is going to be a list of all the players connected, currently connected to the server. Um, and in here, we're just going to say for uh, player MP, P, uh, connected players, connected players, and what this is going to do is it's going to loop through all the connected players and give us their data right here. And then we're just going to say send data, uh, data, and then p.get, oh no, p.ip address, p.port. Okay, so that's going to send that data to all the different clients and it's, it's calling this function again. So there's that. Uh, now we just need to do construction and actual sending of the packet. So we're going to go into the game, well we are in the game server, so what we're going to do in the game server is we're going to need to make some sort of uh, function here. I'm going to create it right here, um, just because, actually no, I'm not, I'm going to make a function for it. So we're going to say um, parse packet, 
and then we're just going to say packet dot get data uh, packet dot get address and packet oops yep dot get port and this parse packet function is going to take all the different um, packets that we can possibly have find out which one it is and it's going to call the it's going to deal with it how it needs to so what we're going to do first off in this is we're going to say packet types uh, packet type so we'll just say packet types type equals equals um, packet dot lookup packet and we're going to say data new string data and then actually hold on let's just create this up here string data no message is equal to new string data dot trim just so we can trim that off there and lookup packet now the ID is going to be message dot substring and it's going to be the begin and index is zero and the end end index is going to be two uh, this should be correct because it does work inclusively, so the 2 is going to be omitted and everything in between these is going to be, including the 0, is going to be looked up. Um, we're also going to just integer.parse int here. Like, actually, no, let's not do that. That's, that's going too far, I think. Let's go into the packet again and let's accept a string. So public static packet types lookup packet string packet ID um, now we're gonna say try catch and in the try we're gonna say return lookup packet uh, integer dot parse int packet ID and the catch is going to be a number format exception so this will just verify that the actual packet is an actual it's a valid packet and this isn't we're not sending like an s or something like that um, and we're, if it is an s we're going to return packet types dot invalid so this is just in case someone's trying to get into our system kind of because we'll never really be sending packets like that so that'll all fix up and now we're just going to do a switch statement on the type and we're going to say case um, we'll say default and then case invalid oops and then we'll just say break and then if the case is going to be login which is what we're going to be dealing about we'll break and case disconnect break there so that's just for now uh, we'll be changing that up a little bit in right now actually login packet so what we need to do here is we need to construct a packet so we're going to say packet or yeah packet zero zero login uh, pack, we'll just call it P. Actually, no, we'll call it packet. Equals new packet zero zero. Man, I can't spell today. Packet zero zero login. Uh, now this is going to take the data again, so we're just going to send in data. Um, that should allow us to do this. Good. Now what we're going to say is we're going to say uh, we're just going to make a printout to say system dot out print line, just to say that the person's connected. So we're going to do that. We're going to say um, address dot get host address just so it's readable uh, with a colon there and then port and then we're gonna say oops put a space there put packet dot get data um, actually let's do packet dot can I yeah I can't get username because we do know that it is a login packet so we're just gonna make something for that so public string get username and return username okay just so we can get the username out of that and go back here get username and then we'll just say has connected dot dot okay so now that we know that they've connected uh, we're going to create them and we're going to say player mp uh, player is equal to new player mp we're going to say game dot level uh, we'll spawn you at 100 and 100 just for the hell of it login packet dot get or not login packet just packet get username uh, address and port okay now you'll notice that I'm not including the um, ID here and that that's going to be an issue so what we're going to do is we're going to say player or not the ID we're not including the input here and that's going to be an issue for moving around so we're going to say player player uh, actually we'll make it equal to null 
there. And if um, address dot get host address uh, dot equals ignore case 127.0.0.1, which is localhost, then we're going to set the input up just like we did in the game class here with new input. If I go down to it, uh, input here. So we're going to send it back up to this input handler, which should already be created, so we just need to verify that that's created. So we're going to do here, I think it is, we're going to say game.input. That should do that. This allows to create it. Oh yes, player. Backspace that, because it's already created. Bam! There we go. And else, we're going to copy this down one, and it's not going to include the input here. So that's that. Uh, and there's it created, so now we just need to add it to the connections. So we're going to say this dot connections, or connected players, dot add player, and then, actually, if, we'll verify that it's not null. It's not equal to null. Okay. And then we will also add it to the game, so we're going to say game dot uh, level dot add entity player. Okay. So there's that. Now we have all the stuff we need. And if we go into the game class, what should we do, what should we do? I'm trying to think about how to do this, because, actually, let's just do it as right here. Game.player is equal to player. Let's do that as well. That works. Uh, now let's go into, that's not going to work for, for localhost, but we'll do that for now just so we can test, because I don't want that to be null. Uh, we're going to remove these now, and we're actually, actually, I'm just going to comment these out. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say socket client, Actually, let's construct a packet. Packet, 00, zero login, uh, login packet is equal to new, packet, 00, zero login. And this accepts now. It's going to accept the username here. So we're going to send that over. So we're going to goption pane dot show message dialog here. Oops. Okay. Import it as well. Now we're going to say login packet dot send data or write data, and we're going to say socket client. So this will send it to the server from this client, and all that should be fine and dandy now. So now we're just going to run this here, and we're going to run the function here, and see everything happen. Uh, we're, yes, we're going to run the server, and we're going to put in our username. And we will see that Vans even is connecting. We are approximately 100-100. Um, there is going to be an issue which I um, accounted, f I didn't account for and I didn't do in this episode because it'd be a bit longer to explain. But essentially when we do it right here, if two people are connecting from localhost, this is going to get overridden and it's actually going to try and write it twice, which is going to cause issues with the actual input and the actual rendering. So all we're, I'm going to run it again and all we're going to look for is if another person has connected, there will be an issue and it will pop up. So please don't be alarmed about that. We'll fix that next episode. Um, but we're not going to run the server on this one. We're going to name him Bob. And as I said, it's going to cause an issue. But you will see here that Bob has connected and Van Zeeben has connected. So that is good. And you'll see here that we do have two people in game. Uh, they, as I said again, they're both affected by the input, the same input. So that, that is an issue and we will correct that with the next episode. But there are two different people in our game and two different clients connected. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I hope you, you, you take it further and expand upon this. So this has been Van Zeeben, and you guys have a good day. The next episode will be up to tomorrow when we do fix that kind of stuff, and I shall see you guys later.